Out front tonight, Republican Congressman Tom McClintock of the Budget Committee. Sir, appreciate your taking the time. Um, you're still in the Capitol. Obviously, we just showed a lot of your colleagues going home on a Wednesday night for uh, after working a three-day week. Obviously, that's an image that frustrates so many Americans. Why are people going home before getting this done? Well, unfortunately, we're not using the standard process where the House passes its version, the Senate passes its version, and then a conference committee, which is a process evolved over centuries, is very good at resolving impasses like this between the two houses. Unfortunately, none of that's being used. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why these things are bogging down now so regularly, is we've abandoned a process that works very well when we use it. House Speaker John Boehner presented a plan to the president, and in that plan, he put $800 billion in revenue from the wealthy on the table. He said he would close loopholes, and, and those people would, would end up, uh, would, would, pay, would pay more money. You are a member of the Tea Party Caucus, and obviously some in your caucus have slammed Boehner's plan, Jim DeMint obviously among them. Do you think John Boehner is the guy who's going to get this done? Is he going to be able to lead your party to consensus? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that question. What he's trying to do is to mitigate the damage that Obama would do with these massive increases in rates. Uh, impasse is not an option. An impasse means everybody's taxes go up. But if the president has his way, taxes are going to go up on those very wealthy folks making over 200000 But problem is most of those very wealthy folks aren't very wealthy and they aren't even folks. They're small businesses filing a subchapter S companies. Uh, about 88 percent of net small business income will be walloped for these taxes at exactly the time when we're depending on them to create two-thirds of the new jobs. So it's, it's, it's a big mess. Boehner is trying to mitigate that mess. I wish him good luck. Something's uh, going to have to give. Yeah, something is going to have to give because realistically from, from everybody, you know, I've talked to and everything I've heard uh, is that we are realistically there's two options for the country right now one go over the cliff the other extend the Bush tax cuts for uh, for the 98 percent of Americans everyone who makes under two hundred thousand dollars a year if they're single a quarter million if they're a family and then deal with everything else later those those seem to be the two choices between those yeah, but, which do you pick yeah but 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 if we do that and raise the taxes on those small businesses we we're just talking about according to the congressional budget office that's going to mean about 200,000 American families are going to be out of work next year and that's the low estimate Ernst and Young is estimating about 700,000 more unemployed as a result of these tax increases on job creators that's an awful lot of hurt for the middle class so this this is a battle for the middle class even when we're talking about that upper bracket because of the enormous impact that has on small business job creators. Okay, I, I mean, aside from that argument, though, I'm really trying to just get at the process here because it does seem, Congressman, that they're really, like I said, there there isn't that much of a choice right now. I mean, the president has said rates have to go up, not just revenue, rates, or he'll veto it, and and he seems to mean it. He does uh, he, mean he it. He does, and, and as I said, the, uh, failure is not an option. An impasse means taxes go up on everybody, including those job creators. So you're you know, saying you ask, you'll go you off the cliff before you extend for the 98% of Americans? No, I did not say that. What I said was that we, we cannot afford an impasse. Something is going to have to give. I can't make that prediction tonight what it's going to be. But, but uh, the president's plan means hundreds of thousands of middle-class families losing their jobs next year. An impasse means that's going to happen plus taxes going up on everybody else uh, it's it, neither one is a viable option right but we're gonna get in a choice where you do have to make a, a choice I mean I guess what I'm saying is is there a way in which you congressman would vote for tax rates to go up because well, again, that's I, the only way to not have that impasse and not go off the cliff Aaron I've got to look at any proposal before I make a commitment on it but I'm telling you tonight uh, the, the, the two alternatives that you've uh, offered, an impasse or the president's plan, neither of those mm -hmm. works. Both of them do enormous damage to our nation's economy. Senator Tom Coburn today, as you know, uh, very vocal on this issue. He's put years into it. He's, he's reached out across the aisle, worked with people like Senator Mark Warner. He said he would rather raise tax rates than eliminate loopholes and cap deductions, which is the opposite of, of what it sounds like you're saying or what Speaker Boehner is saying. So. What do you think about Tom Coburn's idea? Would you take a look at it? Well, I, you know, I, I think that Coburn's basically coming from the standpoint is these taxes are programmed to go into effect December 31st unless something happens, and he's trying to make something happen. Um, but you know, again, I can't make a prediction on where we're going to end up because I don't know. Well, 
Uh, but do you think we're going to get a deal by the end of the year? I mean, that's that's we, that's the question. I mean, and, and the whole world is watching this. As some of them laughing at us, but also uh, cause a real problem in our financial markets. Well, we have to because if if we allow those taxes to go up, or if we allow the president's plan for them to go up on on the people that we're actually depending upon to to, to make uh, a new jobs in this this dismal economy, mm -hmm. um, boy, the world's going to be laughing at us then, and nobody in America is going to be laughing. It's going to be an all world of hurt going around. All right. But in, in, in a final word, in a word, the bottom line is you're, you're, you don't like the option, but you're willing to look at anything, and that includes rates going up. You're willing to look. Uh, but I would certainly hope that we come up with the process that has worked a lot better when we've used it in the past in this business of the leaders getting behind closed doors and working out a deal and then dumping it in the laps of the, the Congress. That's not the way it's supposed to work. All right. Well, thank you very much, Congressman. We appreciate your taking the time tonight. A big question for this country.